How's it going everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to take a look at uh, some animations, how to add them. I'm going to go through the marketplace animations first because I know a motion capture suit is not something that everybody has access to. So we'll run through these uh, using the marketplace animations first and then uh, I'll talk about mocap in another video. But as usual, before we get started, uh, shout out to my level two patrons that are on screen right now. Uh, remember, we have two levels of Patreon. Level one, if you get some Discord perks, and level two, you get early access to the videos and a shout out on my tutorials. Now, remember, the Discord is there for you if you need any help. There's a lot of people in there. Uh, we're almost getting very close to a thousand users on the server. Uh, there's a Twitter if you want to follow me, there's an Instagram, everything is in the description down below. Uh, subscribe to the channel, always leave a like, please, it really helps a lot if you leave a like and a comment. And uh, let's get started. So I just put together uh, this real quick. Is just these two characters facing off against each other, and there's nothing happening. It's just, you know, a little bit of motion uh, that I was trying out with some marketplace animations. And we're going to go over a couple of important points about uh, certain things that you have to take into account when using marketplace animations just to make your life easier. If you are making your custom character from scratch, you're making your own animations, that's something different. But if you're going to use marketplace animations and you're using marketplace characters, then these tips are going to be very useful. Now, the first thing that we, you see here is that this guy has a sword, which uh, he didn't have one in the short film, and actually this one doesn't have one. Now, I'm going to show you how to get a prop onto your uh, customized metahuman. This is actually very easy. It's the same way that we did the face last time. So if you want to take a crack at that before watching the tutorial, that's fine. Then come back and see if you nailed it. Uh, but if not, then just uh, feel free to follow along. I'm actually going to use the same character that we used last time. So I'm going to go to my metahumans. And this is the metahuman that we used last time for that tutorial. Uh, he's under a light right now. Okay, there you go. So this is the same metahuman that we created last time. I just hit some of the clothing elements. They don't interfere. But he is exactly the same metahuman that we constructed in our last video. Now, what we need to do is get him some weapons. What I like to do is I always like to keep one without weapons and just construct another blueprint with weapons in case I need to switch back and forth. So I'm just going to do right click, duplicate, I'm going to call it person with sword. And we're going to open our blueprint over here. And I'm actually going to browse to where this sword is. Let's go to where the sword is. Super quick way to browse to where the sword is. And all you have to do is with your uh, body selected, you just add your prop. You can add whatever you want. Anything that you want your character to have in the hand. It can be a sword, it can be an axe, it can be a shield. I uh, just have to reposition it a little bit different. I actually did the same thing for a, a previous sword that I made, kind of like with Dying Light-ish, I think. Yeah, well, yeah, it, it was a short where I tested those voices, those AI voices, and I actually used this same system to add a communicator to the metahuman's hand. So you're just gonna throw it here, and it's going to be parented to the body, which again, it's really important because that's what's going to make it follow the hand once you add the animation. So over here, you're gonna see that we have a parent suck, and you're going to look for, without having to move anything I know he looks like he's being impaled by this sword but we're just going to look for hand and I'm just going to throw it on the right hand and you, as you can see instantly it goes into the right hand but it kind of goes into the wrist so you may have to offset it a little bit and position it whenever you want so I'm just going to throw this uh, let's call it around here And if you have uh, two-handed swords animations, which I do have some, uh, you may have to adjust this for the two-handed sword animations later. But uh, let's just go with one-handed for now. So I think that is positioned uh, exactly where I need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get him 
browse to asset and get the blueprint that has the sword there you go let's turn him around and now we need to add some animation so i can show you how the sword uh stays with the hand all the time now when it comes to animation this is one huge tip that i always like to use whenever i'm using my marketplace assets because it just makes your life easier if you have an asset that is made to the mannequin skeletal structure meaning all the bones are exactly the same as the mannequin and you got all your animations to be the same to be with the same skeleton with the same mannequin skeleton then all you got to do is go into the skeletal mesh so this is the skeletal mesh that I'm using right click go to skeleton assign skeleton I think I did this in the ROG video but I'm just going to repeat it here real quick and all you have to do is search for the skeleton that came with the animation pack and again you're gonna see how easy this is you don't even have to retarget anything so let me uh, look for the file path because I have several here so I have neuron fantasy um, let's do boss enemy uh, this is probably two-handed but that's fine I'm gonna say accept it's going to tell me hey you need to save the skeleton uh, which it's fine if you want to save that. I don't need to save it right now, but it will still work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another sequence. Let's go over here and add a level sequence. We'll do test tutorial sort. There we go. We have another sequence. These guys got reset it and we're going to add this right here. Uh, we're gonna delete the control rig because if you keep the facial control rig you'll not be able to move him however I don't know if this is a bug or what uh, but whenever I remove the facial control rig then I lose my gizmo my gizmo is no longer there and the way that I go around it is just to save the sequence close the sequence reopen the sequence and there you have your gizmo I I think this is a bug because it's it's weird. It this shouldn't happen. Anyways, uh, that's how you fix it. Now what you need to do is you need to add an animation to this. The way that we add an animation is we need to add a track for our body, which in this case is the Gothic Knight BB Meta. And in here we're gonna find the animation. So if we go into animations, you're gonna see that now I have all the animations that belong to that skeleton that I use because Every time you download a animation pack from the marketplace, it's going to come with a mannequin skeleton and you just need to switch it out the same way that I just did. And you don't have to retarget anything. So let's do this. You can see him. I just added one animation, it seems to be pretty long. So let's do, let's do 500. Okay, that's probably too far. Let's bring it over. All right, now that we have this animation right here, let's play that animation. And as you can see, he does that and it looks good. It just looks good. We didn't have to retarget anything. You didn't see me retarget anything. And the animation just worked right out of the box and we can just keep doing it. And you can see that he animates pretty well. He does that and he does the swing. So this is one of the great reasons why you want to a use a marketplace asset that has a mannequin skeletal rig and also use an animation pack that is custom to that. Also, if you happen to be making your own character or rigging your own character, so let's say in Blender with Auto Rig Pro, which has this function, you can tell it to rig it to the mannequin skeleton and it will give you the same results. So, if you're making your custom character, you don't have a motion capture system, you're not going to be spending tons of hours and hours, probably months, just animating the character yourself. You just want to make uh, buy you some marketplace uh, animations, then this is the way to go. And as you can see, there is zero retargeting that I did. We can even switch to some other animation. Uh, let's do this one. Just going to delete that. Let's put this animation over here. This is a long animation. Um, and just hit play. 
And he does that. And again, this is the part where I tell you that we may have to correct, even though it actually looks good. It actually looks pretty good. There's probably some errors if you slow it down, but that actually looks pretty nice. And uh, yeah, these are some boss animations that are pretty well done. They came free once with the marketplace. Uh, highly recommend them, by the way. It's called Boss Enemy. Uh, okay, so we're done with that. Let's say this is not what you want. Let's say you wanted... Why is the landscape here? Let's say you wanted him to use another pack. I do have another pack of animations in this project, which is the 100 sword attacks and finishers. Uh, this is not a one-handed sword, but we'll just roll with it. Now, I'm just going to do the same thing that I did before. So before adding him over here, just do this before adding him to sequencer, because otherwise uh, you will see some crashing because I've seen some crashing if I do it on sequencer. Um, just browse to where your skeletal mesh is for the body. Right click, skeleton, assign skeleton, and I'm going to look for the one with the one handed. Let me see, should be around here somewhere. There you go. Here it is. You mannequin skeleton, 100 sword attacks and finisher. Click here, accept. And again, if they are one to one, you should just get this message to save the skeleton. If there are any extra bones of another animation that you've downloaded, or if you have some extra bones on your character, it's going to tell you, hey, this has some extra animations that shouldn't be there. And you just say okay, and it usually should be fine, but I always recommend to stick with the uh, epic skeleton. If you're doing creatures, that's another process entirely, just so you know that. Okay, after we've done that, I'm just going to grab a warrior, throw it in here. And we're going to delete the face control rig. First, we're not going to use it. And second, if we want to move or do any transformations on our character, like rotation or anything else, we're not going to be able to. So I'm going to do the same dance that I did before because uh, uh, Epic, can you please fix that, please? And as you can see, we can do the animations. Actually, uh, we can do the animations from here if we wanted to. But nothing's going to happen because we are tracking it from the blueprint. The blueprint is telling you, yeah, you do have a skeletal mesh over here that you can uh, use this animations with, but you need to add it to its correct skeletal mesh, not to the blueprint. So we're just going to click on track, Gothic Knight, and over here, we're gonna add our animation. So let's do, um, I don't know which animations are in this. Uh, these are usually pretty short. And I think this is just blocking. Let me search for, uh, I think the longer one, it's an idle animation. Let's do idle standing. That's a little bit longer, so not as long as the other ones, but we can play it. As you can see, it plays very well. It's the same animations that I had on these characters before um, that you saw in the intro. So as you can see, the animation plays really well. He has his hand around the sword. And the sword is actually following his hand. So that's why it's important that you parent that sword to the hand socket. Otherwise, it's not going to follow his hand and you're going to have all kinds of trouble. There is one thing that I wanted to mention is uh, the root motion when it comes to Unreal characters. And uh, this is something that we we'll probably have to fix in post. By post, I mean um, just moving the sword a little bit while the animation is rolling. But what I want to mention here is when you download animation packs, they usually come with two types of animations. One is in place and the other one is with root motion transformation, meaning it's transforming the character forward like it does in this case. It's doing it forward and up because it's a jump. And sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes you just want them in place. Like if it's running forward, you just want them to run in place, something like that. I do have a video about that that I did with a MetaHuman Runner where I show you how to string some animations together if you don't want to use root motion. I usually use root motion for these actions because these actions are very hard to like 
animate the where the height should be and where the transformation forward should be. This is already done for you. So uh, it's easier to just reuse that. And that video has a lot of tips on that. So that's why I'm not including it here. Otherwise, this would be like a two hour video. All right, everybody, that is it for this video. This wasn't a long one, but I just wanted to show you how to add marketplace animations, how you can swap skeletons between your custom character and animation spec to make your life so much easier when you're using marketplace asset animations. Now, stay tuned for the next video where we're going to be talking about motion capture and how to use it with your Unreal Engine characters. Remember to leave a like, leave a comment, helps with the YouTube algorithm. There's a Patreon if you wanna give us a little bit of an extra help. Uh, remember to follow me on Twitter, Instagram. There is the Discord if you need some help, if you have questions, and I'll see you in the next video.